everybody. I'm going to try to upload this uh, like roll time or within a couple of hours after I make it. I discussed what I'm going to discuss now on the little teaching video I do on Sunday with my daughter. Today is my birthday, July 17th, and uh, so we did a little like birthday thing. It's a little significant in the sense I didn't realize I made comments about the shooting in Baton Rouge of the three officers that were killed today. But I also was upset about the media coverage because I, I watched it, I put on the news when I got to my daughter's house and of course I saw the uh, shooting. And as I watched the various uh, news outlets, being I'm uh, making this, you know, right after they're reporting it, MSNBC was not reporting whether or not it was a black man that shot these Baton Rouge officers, though one of the officers also is black, maybe more than one, but because it was a black man that shot the cops in Baton Rouge, of course, the normal connection would be Baton Rouge is where Alton Sterling was killed. And so, if you had a man that maybe possibly was black that went to Baton Rouge because this man came from Kansas City, Missouri, you would connect at least he might have been upset about the cops shooting of Alton Sterling, which was also uh, incited the man who shot the five Dallas officers. So, so anyway, I mean, that's normally what you would think. But MSNBC, we're not reporting the race of the man who shot the three Baton Rouge police officers. Instead, they were having a conversation about white Christian groups that are in the South which I'm familiar with. I'm, I don't agree with their ideology. Uh, and the, the, there are some white Christian groups, uh, even out of Texas. I'm familiar, though. I've heard these at uh, various levels of them uh, on Christian radio. And they basically are anti-government groups. They would be like a Timothy McVeigh type of... Uh, Timothy McVeigh of the infamous bombing of the Murrow Federal, Federal Building in Oklahoma... Well, a, a McVeigh type of a attack against police or a federal government building, of course, that's a whole warped ideology, just like the warped ideology of uh, those who are shooting police officers. It's all unjustified. So MSNBC was basically using that narrative and saying this individual seems to not be... Uh, what we have seen in Dallas, which was an upset black man that was also former military, but instead we might be looking at a Timothy McVeigh. Now, of course, I'm listening to this, thinking, oh, it, you know, but to me, I thought, well, but it took place in Baton Rouge. It would seem that he was more influenced by uh, the killing of Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge, but they were kind of you know, not persuading me, but I was upset saying, you know, y'all are portraying this killing, this this tragic killing of three cops in Baton Rouge, and you're giving me and everyone else the view that we might be looking at a Timothy McVeigh. And I kept saying, look, I, I want to see, I want to solve the problem or the puzzle like everybody else, but they refused to report the race of the individual. And I'm not saying, look, if he was black, then it's going to give an indication that it might have been. And then I finally uh, Googled it on the phone, and it said he was a black man. Okay, that would lead to believe. The thing that's upsetting, and the reason I'm going to post this, is they kept going with the narrative. MSNBC, I misquoted it on the video I made earlier, which you will not see because it's a teaching video. I said the man... Uh, that was giving this narrative was uh, it, he, he was Pete Williams. He was not uh, the other reporter I thought it was. 
Either way, they also gave a tweet that talked about Donald Trump again, because Trump gave a tweet. They tied him into the... Here's the point I'm making and the reason I'm making this one, and we'll hopefully upload it real time. Uh, the shooting now, we're seeing at, what is it, 6, 530. It's on, it's on my birthday I made this video, July 17th. And the shooter, it was his birthday. He was born in uh, 1987 on July 17th. 1987 is the year we started our ministry, by the way. I just remember the date. And just a few things to note. Um, it seems now, because CNN just reported, well, he, we're looking at his social media posts, but we don't know if there are his, his posts. For instance, it could be somebody else. If those social media posts, which they're investigating right now, if those posts... Uh, um, show that he was the shooter of the Baton Rouge police officers on July 17, 2016. If those social media posts show that he was basically mad about the Alton Sterling shooting, he was mad about the shooting of the blacks, then obviously there's no reason to hide this. If you are a white racist and you are going after black people, Dylan Roof, who went into the black church, I've discussed it, nobody doubted his motives, nor was it a mystery. And the federal government is seeking to execute him, rightfully so. They're going for the death penalty. Now, Dylan Roof obviously was influenced by white racism. We know that. How? From what he said, from what he posted. And there was no mystery. Okay, the president or nobody else said it was a mystery. The shooting of the Dallas officers, the man who shot them told the black Dal Dallas police chief, I'm doing it because it's retaliation. It's retaliation for the shootings of black people. Unjustified. But he said that's what it was. And some in the media said, well, it's a mystery. We had, we're not sure what motivated him. Nobody questioned what motivated Timothy McVeigh. Nobody questioned what motivated Dylan Roof, because he had writings, he had postings. But it, I find it strange that we can question if, if a black person who I defend, I defend uh, the black people who are being uh, mistreated, which does happen in the country. But you speak truth on both sides. I was upset that the MSNBC narrative, as far as I know, they're still trying to do it, were actually even not convincing me, but the more they spoke about it, but they would not report his race. And they basically said, uh, he, it, you're looking at sort of like a white Christian conservative movement that targeted anti-government which is what they would have liked. And I just kept saying to myself, report the race. And then the name came out. I said, well, I don't know. Is it black? And then I Googled it. It's black. You said, what does that mean? Well, it, it, it helps us understand whether it's a white person motivated out of anger towards black people, like Dylan Roof, whether it's a Timothy McVeigh who is motivated out of anti-government views and beliefs, or if it's a black person that's upset with the shootings of blacks. But they didn't want to go with that. They didn't want to report truth. And, and this is tonight. This is why I'm doing the update. I'll discuss it more when you get the teaching video which I made today, which I also talked about this. So I just wanted to give a, an update on it. Uh, we condemn all shooting, you do not target officers or cops, ever. If it's a self-defense thing where somebody is going to shoot you in the head and you're, uh, but you do not target the police. And at the same time, 
those that are on the side, like I also am on the side, of defending the abuses, you don't be silent about that. You can stand for justice on both sides. The president gave a fairly good comment tonight, but they're also uh, speaking of the people that are unstable. They're, they're, they're defining them as cowards. Let me say it would be better to define them as people that are more, they went over the edge. The shooter of the Baton Rouge cops was also a Marine. And then there's some questions, oh, well, they need to get the proper help when they come back. I agree with that, but let me say, this deals with the motivations of much of what I've been discussing for a couple years. It, it is un, it's unnatural to send our young boys into wars. It's unnatural and to say, we're going to settle a difference <coughs> with this other country <coughs> by having you go and shoot them and kill them, which, would, which is what war is, unless it's justified, unless it's justified. And so we, these kids that get recruited or join the military, we're basically saying to them, we're building into them a belief system, an ethos that says we have a disagreement with a certain country, and oftentimes it's political, and therefore the way we're going to handle it, guys, to the young recruits, is you're going to go and you're going to kill them. And then when they come back, we say, maybe we don't have the proper treatment for them. No, no, you have built something into them. You have told them that the way you deal with some of these differences, we go in and we enter in the war. So I don't think coward, deranged, people that have gone over the edge, these are the proper descriptions, unjustified. But when you say coward, even in their deranged understanding, taking vengeance, seeing, in their deranged understanding, it's not so much cowardly. It's because they've, they've gone to a tipping point where they believe that they're going to let their life be taken in order to take the life of another. That's unjustified. It's wrong. It's deranged. But don't say cowardly, because even the radicals who die by killing themselves, they're doing it because they've grasped onto a deranged form of courage. And it's better to speak truth. And, that, and what I'm telling you is true. They feel like the giving of their lives, whether it's a suicide bomber, whether it's somebody that uh, shot those Dallas cops and went full and well, his life is going to be over, or the man that shot them in Baton Rouge. Cowardly really isn't the description. They've been motivated, and they're, they've been radicalized, even if it's a non-Muslim idea of radicalization. They've reached a tipping point, and it seems as if the man in, that shot the Baton Rouge officers, it seems as if yes, indeed. It wasn't like MSNBC was trying to spin it, that a possible white supremacist group, it would have solved the, the problem if they simply reported the race of the man. That would exclude him at least from being a, quote, white supremacist. But they were playing that tonight. So what we say is this update, live, real time, we condemn the violence towards officers. We condemn what this man did. We also understand that there is indeed a problem with the way abuses have taken place. We understand that as well. And it would be wrong to say, oh, now, because I have conservative friends. And when they see this, I get texts from them. They scroll on the screen. I don't read texts. Scroll. He said, and he almost has an anger towards all blacks when he sees this. That we must not, you know, it's the black. No, no, there are legitimate just issues on both sides. So I want to give you this update because I'll speak about it on my birthday video, which was made today. Look, I'm not reading. Thank you for anyone who sent me. Uh, I'm trying to avoid reading. I don't read messages and all that kind of stuff, okay? Facebook and all you guys.
So that's just an update. Pray for the families. Father, we pray for the families of the victims. The, the cops who were shot in Baton Rouge today, we pray for them. We pray also for the country. That as we engage in the conversation that's going on, I liked what President Obama said. I thought it was good what he said. That we have to reject, even in a political season, we have to reject using points. They're using it like, like the news did. They were hoping so much that it was a white KKK guy that did it. They even played that narrative and held back the race of the man. After they knew. That's unjust. That itself, itself incites violence because of the way they did that. The way they, they, they tried so much to put the, the gun in the hands of those who they disagree with, particularly Christian Southern conservatives, which was a total distortion, which it was unjust for them to have done that. So we pray for the kingdom of God to be established, pray for healing in the country, pray for protection on all cops, all officers. Help them walk in the, in the paths that you've given them. We pray that those that have been uh, gone over the wall, they've lost it. They've done acts like the men did today. We pray that that would be toned down. That they would use the media to make their arguments. We condemn all violence. In Jesus' name.